Good morning, guys. Hi. Uh, the show is debuting today. Yes. And obviously, you guys must be pretty excited. I I am really excited because this this has been brewing for uh, for some time now, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's great that a show that is essentially all Canadian right. gets to premiere here, and the Canadians get to see it first. That's cool. So tell us a little bit about the show. Obviously, it's about time travel, but not like what we've seen before. Yeah, I think it is a different time travel show. Um, so basically, people from hundreds and hundreds of years from now um, figure out a way to tra um, travel or send a consciousness back into 2016, present day. Um, and pretty much they're doing that to try and correct events that humanity's made to try to save the future. Yeah, rather than bodies get it going into machines and, and traveling back, the bodies that our characters are in are the people that are living right now that were about to die, and we knew that historically, thanks to uh, social media and, and the records that are kept. Um, and so we, it's like we've stolen cars, so the, we, but they said in this case we've stolen bodies and lives. We, we now lead their lives like, like spies. It's, it's more like an episode of The Americans right. than it is uh, a sci-fi show. And I, I can't help but even think of, uh, I, I mentioned this to you in June when we met before, it reminds me a little bit of Quantum Leap in a, in a funny way, which I, I kind of like because no one else has tried that kind of living in someone else's shoes, I guess. He does, in Quantum Leap, I haven't seen it, but he tra he goes from body to body to body, right? right? Whereas so you guys we, are just going one, one body, body. That's one time thing, we're stuck in it forever. Which um, is almost harder. Yeah, I mean, it's a one-shot. I mean, for my character, it is not necessarily the body that she was expecting or necessarily wanted to be in. Right. Um, so, yeah, once we go, it's there for good. And that's the other side of this, is that, you know, because of the records, they, how they learned about the people they're, they're going back to, things aren't perfect. Things aren't exactly as they might expect. Well, it's the, the concept of, of social media representing who we are. Well, no one tells the truth about who they are on Match.com <laughs> or on Twitter or on Instagram. So it's uh, to rely on that as, as historical record. And people will. I mean, in right. 100 years, the stuff we wrote on, on our Facebook page today will have uh, a, a degree of fact that perhaps it doesn't actually have. I kind of like that commentary because the few things I keep thinking of when I was watching the first episode was the commentary on social media as representing who we are, the commentary even on the future of humanity and how things do look kind of grim right now. Mm -hmm. uh, did you guys feel that in playing the episodes? Was there that element as well? Well, I think we, you know, the, unfortunately, the, what was being mirrored uh, month by month in reality is, is we're seeing it now in the American election, that, that things can yeah. turn ugly very quickly if, if things went the way they're not going to. Yeah. But uh, but if they did, you start to think, well, what what is it that could turn? Uh, we've seen movies where it was natural disaster. We've seen movies where it was it was um, the weapons that man builds and uh, the choices that man makes. We're not sure what it is, but we we know for sure that these travelers have come from a, a crappy uh, future, and right. and so it it's, I think it's it permeates the whole show, not just that the future is bad and they're trying to change it, but that they're kind of loving the present that they're right. suddenly in, uh, in a way that I don't think we would if we suddenly had to go back to 1832. It probably, we wouldn't be as in love as these yeah, guys these are. Yeah, these people haven't even seen, you know, trees or right. um, maybe even animals, birds. They, they, they didn't have that, or in our minds, how we um, think of the future, they don't have that then. So right. everything is brand new, how green it is. Um, my f character, um, in the first episode is on a bus and she's just like taking everything in. We all do it as far as like you drinking yeah. coffee or Jared having a burger, you know. So yeah. it's all first. That's a great shot in, in, in the pilot is uh, is Mackenzie's character just staring at a bus and the way he shot it and the, the look of wonder on her mm -hmm. face is fantastic. Which, I mean, that's even another element of the show is maybe appreciating things more than we do currently. The fact that we do have it pretty good if you think of where things have been and even maybe where things could go. Well, particularly in the age of social media, we, we, we take everything for granted. I mean, uh -huh. my kid will never know a world where he can't have everything he wants right now. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, mm -hmm. and, and expressing your opinion right now. And you know who's going to hear it? Everyone. 
if you want, you, all you have to do is hashtag the right thing and you're suddenly part of a global dialogue that uh, we absolutely take for granted. So. Right. It's, that's cool. Like I like that aspect of where we are, but it's also a little scary. Right. Yeah. So then in terms of you know, their future, are we going to find out a bit more about where things are at and why they need to change things throughout the season? I'm assuming that's a big kind of discovery thing throughout the season. Yeah, you never get to see it in season one. Which um, is kind of cool. Looks. Yeah, so yeah. it's still going to be a mystery, hopefully going into season two. Um, but we definitely describe it more. And what, what, what makes the show, I think, really smart, and I think people are going to be excited and surprised by, A, the look of it and how and how modern and, and eerie it feels. It, right. it is a moody, moody show. But also Brad Wright, who created it, made a very definite decision to lay things out little by little it's it, it, he does not insult anybody's intelligence there's right. no sense of well here's the pilot and here's all the information you need to know there's uh, the pilot is surprising at every turn and with each subsequent episode we will learn new things about where they've come from and, and why and speaking of brad I, I can't help but think of his other series i mean not just stargate but stargate uh universe to me the dynamic between characters and, and that sort of thing, the, the groundwork they laid in that first season, it does remind me a little bit of how deep we go with these characters. And a lot of shows just don't spend that time. I think he's a unique writer that way. I think that character and humor matter as much right. to him as any sci-fi element, uh, as any dramatic element. So it's a real balance. And particularly with this show, looking the way it does, you don't expect some of the laughs. There's actually I, I was laughing because I've seen I've seen the pilot episode a dozen times, and I was I watched it the other day with my wife, and I was laughing at things mm -hmm. that I just it's dark dark humor, but dark humor and also the characterizations. These these young actors that I'm with are so good, and the the detail they find is remarkable, and uh, so I think the audiences are going to fall in love. They're beyond this premise, they're going to fall in love with these characters in a way that you often don't get to in a, in a more um, strict sci-fi show. And even the fact for me that the first episode, there are people who could be throwaway characters. There are people who could be nothing, really. In terms of other shows, they would just be there for a second and gone. But there's actual care and attention even to the side characters. Is that I agree great? 100%. I mean, yeah. when you think of... of Jay and mm -hmm. um, and uh, Leah Karens, who plays my wife in the second episode, and on and uh, there's a number of of characters that will be very important, and we're, that we're only hinted their importance right now. And I love that forethought as uh, as the writers. Brad's written them so they could be series regulars right. next season. Like right. that's how detailed he is on you know a ca character who comes in for one episode. That's cool. So tell me a little bit about what their troubles are going to be this season? Are, are there some things you can hint at that are going to be the keys to unlocking their characters? Well, one of the things that I think is really cool about the show, it's, it's not like these five people are here to save the universe. Right. There are travelers all over the yeah, world. Yeah, there's like 300, and they say. The, yeah, I think it's, it's hundreds is all they say. Right. And, um, and so the, those teams are everywhere, and those teams can't talk to each other without, um, without instructions from, from the director. So, Anybody at any time in any scene could be a traveler, and if they suddenly approach us, it was because they were instructed to, and they don't know why, and we don't know why. So there's, there's always going to be an element of, of secrecy and never quite understanding the big picture, which I mm. think is, mm -hmm. is really cool. And then the flip side is just our lives, our, our, our actual, uh, the lives of these characters that we kind of, we did research, right. but we only had what we had. We only had social media. We had uh, limited... Um, access to what they who they really were so we get to discover that mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd talk a lot <laughs> you covered it up <laughs> is it is it interesting to think about who they really are in the future do you did you guys spend much time conceptualizing who they are what they do day to day in the future we definitely asked Brad so many questions, and then we also got some creative control, you know, to decide for ourselves. Right. Um, so, you know, in my mind, my character in the future is a 50-year-old doctor, and she comes back into the body of a 19, 20-year-old girl. Right. Um, so I've Which tried. Is yeah. Think so about. it's kind of. I think I kind of get to play like, well, two characters for sure, but I have three characters in my mind almost. Um, so, yeah. 
my character in the future is a circus monkey. <laughs> so he, this, he's really excited about this new opportunity. Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Please do that. <laughs> <laughs> a 300-year-old Ryan Gosling, maybe? Or? I just really... In case Ryan's watching, Mackenzie just went from circus monkey to you. <laughs> so I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> and anything you can tease about what we're going to see, uh, are there, like, what kind of conflicts are coming? I mean, throughout the season, I have a big conflict with, um, well, Marcy has a big conflict with her health. Right. So that's something that every episode, you know, other than doing missions and trying to live as Marcy, she's always, she's also trying to, you know, not get herself hurt or, right. or, or struggle with her, um, I guess I can't really say exactly what it is. We but have to keep some stuff. Yeah. Safe. Of course. But health, struggling with health. So, right. um. That's an aspect that plays out through the whole thing. And then also, there's a really cool relationship that develops with me and David. I was going to say, David seems like mm -hmm. a very cool... Yeah, it's... Very cool possibilities mm -hmm. there. Yes. Um, Patrick Gilmore plays him, and I just love him. And we connected um, just as friends. And so it's, it'll be cool for you guys to see. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much. I hope you have a great premiere. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. I can't wait to talk for season two. Thank you. Talk to you soon.